Hi, I am Amarissa Barker, Marketing Officer at the Guyana Marketing Corporation. And today, I would like to welcome you to our first ever Cooking with Carnegie, an Agriculture Month collaboration with the Carnegie School of Home Economics. The theme for this year's Agriculture Month is investing in agriculture for poverty reduction and sustainable development. Today, we have with us Ms. Belina Grenon and Ms. Kavita Moore from the Carnegie School of Home Economics, who will be creating dishes using farine and other different flowers made in Guyana. All of the products we will be using today are locally produced and can be found in the Guyana shop and the Guyana shop corners located in supermarkets across the country. My name is Kavita Moore. I am an instructor at Carnegie School of Home Economics. And, this, and today, we will be making some banana pancakes for you. All ingredients are locally made in Guyana. And so we're gonna show you how to do some banana pancakes. We have our bowl. So we have some self-rising flour. It is two cups of flour. And this is our banana flour, locally made in Guyana. We'll add it one cup. You mix. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of sugar. So for flavorings, I'm gonna add half teaspoon of nutmeg and some cinnamon. Powder. Mix. So this is our dry ingredient. Now for the wet ingredient, We're gonna pour in some milk. About one and a quarter cups of milk. Two tablespoons melted butter. And two eggs. all together and if it's too dry you could always add a little more milk you want to have a nice running butter if you could see mine it's kind of thick so we're gonna add some more milk We're gonna mix. So instead of making just plain pancakes for your children, you could add you could add banana flour so you can make it healthy for them. And you can even um, add the whole fruit also, so it could be healthier for your um, kids at home. 
So this is the consistency we have. So we're gonna leave it to set for about five minutes and then we're going to make it on the stove. After you mix the dry and the wet ingredients, this is what the butter should look like. So you leave it to rest about five minutes and then you go and you start to make it on the stove top. So we're going to the stove top to make our pancakes. So first we're going to put some oil in the pan. This will help the pancake not to stick on the pan. Now if you don't have a pan like this home, you can use your tawa or the roti pan to make it. So we put a little oil. This is to avoid the pancake from sticking on the pan. You can measure the amount if you want the same size. You pour the butter into the pan. You can either use the cup or you just roll your pan. You allow it to cook like until you see bubbles and then you flip it on the other side. So our batch of banana pancakes is finished and you can have this with some local honey or some margarine or you can use jam or any stew that you have home you can eat it with because it's healthy. I'm Valina Granian, instructor at Carnegie School of Home Economics. And today, we're going to prepare cassava pizza. To begin the cassava pizza, we're going to use all of the dry ingredients first. We're going to sieve it, all-purpose flour, along with the cassava flour, one and a half cups cassava flour. What I like to do, I like to sieve all of the dry ingredients together. Here we have one teaspoon of salt, one tablespoon of sugar, and yeast. And this, even though the sieve would have helped to evenly distribute the two different flours, the cassava and the wheat flour, I am helping it some more by mixing. So now, I'm going to add the oil, locally made cooking oil, which can be found in the Guyana shop, coconut oil, our very own. And now I'm pouring the warm water, one cup, and I am mixing to pull the flour together. So cassava flour has a very small percentage of protein, so there isn't much gluten here. But the all-purpose flour has gluten, so that will help this mixture along nicely, giving it some amount of elasticity, helping it to raise. Now the dough is sticky, so this will help to dry, get it a bit dry, not too dry, and allow me to knead the dough so that I can further mix the two flowers together and work in. We 
We will knead this dough for approximately 10 minutes. The action is to actually fold the dough and push, not to poke it around. All right, so here we have the dough that I've just finished kneading. And we make sure that it is well formed and smooth. And this will be allowed to raise for approximately 40 minutes. Now, after the dough has risen, I've taken out half of the amount because I don't need all of it right now. So if you notice, it's a bit different to the actual dough that we normally have with wheat flour. Because of the cassava, this dough isn't actually holding, right? Even though it has some amount of stretch because of the gluten, it isn't completely doughy and has much elasticity because of that, right? So I have to take my time with this dough. So I'm gonna form it, I'm gonna be gentle. What the kneading has done and the rising has done, it has helped to form the gluten strands, to strengthen the gluten strands so that the, the mixture, the dough could actually have a form, a frame, a body in it. Without the gluten, this thing would be flat. Now I can use a rolling pin, right, for demonstration purposes and I roll but I will be gentle. If you heard of the measurements, I have one and a half cups of cassava flour in here and one cup of all-purpose flour. So I'll gently pick this up. If I rough this up, it's going to tear. So I can finish forming the dough in the pan. So now I can press. I can do what I have to do in this pan here. This has to be baked on high heat for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. So you cannot forget this in the oven. Or else it can dry out, it can burn, it can become tough. All right, so I'm satisfied with this. I'm going to begin putting my topping onto my pizza dough, the cassava pizza dough. And I will be a bit gentle, I will not be generous because too much of this pizza sauce can make a soggy dough. So we don't want a soggy pizza. We try to get it evenly spread across the, the dough. Now the beauty about pizza is that your topping can vary according to your life, your preference. And you can have more than one toppings on various parts of the pizza. Whether half of the pizza is of one type or not, or it's mixed together. So what I like to do, I like to mix it all up. I will put some of the chicken part pieces, a layer of cheese, I will not put all of it. Sliced tomatoes. Some chopped sweet peppers. 
You can color your chicken if you want to, but in this case, I don't have to because I have a lot of colors in this. So I'm going to use a bit of mozzarella cheese here. Mind you, you can use whatever cheese you have at home. Cheddar cheese. You can go all vegetarian. You don't have to use meat. This already looks very delicious as it is. I will not overdo it, but I know we all love cheese. And this is for approximately 15 to 20 minutes in the oven. And this cheese will melt nicely. And there you have it, our cassava pizza. The oven has to be very hot. This was preheated. Now we'll begin making the breadfruit cake. It is a very delicious dish. So we'll begin by sifting the dry ingredients. So here we have two cups of breadfruit flour, half cup of granulated sugar, one and a half teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of salt, and one and a half teaspoon of baking soda. We'll sift it. Now, as I see, air is being added to this mixture. To the dry ingredients. Air also acts as a raising agent. Now I'll use a whisk. This will further assist in ensuring that the ingredients are mixed in properly. Now I can mix this by hand or I can use a electrical cake mixer so I will add my dry ingredients if you notice the fine dust is rising the grains the breadfruit flour is very light and very fine so it will raise quickly I like to make a well in the center get an even distribution I'll throw all of the I'll add all of the wet ingredients. I'll use the egg, two eggs, one teaspoon of essence, vanilla essence, one cup of evaporated milk, half cup cooking oil, I'll gently stir a bit, fold in a bit, and I will put it in a mixer, so medium speed for approximately two minutes. Preheating the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for a few minutes, approximately five minutes, and then we'll lower it a bit because the cake pan is thick. It's approximately eight inches thick. So now I've greased the baking pan. If I were to use a bigger pan, this wouldn't raise as much and it would look as if it has fallen. It will have a flat appearance. This wouldn't raise too much because it doesn't have gluten, maybe a small percentage. Now 
Now I don't want to put it on too high a shelf because I don't need a top burning. I need it to be balanced, you see? We're gonna now going to make some cheesy Edo bread. Alright? We custom we're accustomed to eat bread with normal all-purpose flour, but today we're gonna make some Edo bread. So first we have some all-purpose flour. This is the Edo flour, it's gluten-free. I'm gonna mix all the dry ingredients together. We have some sugar. The sugar helps to activate the yeast. It acts as food. We have the yeast. And salt. We're gonna mix it together. We're gonna add the wet ingredients, which is some milk. We're gonna add enough to form a sticky dough. So you add the milk little at a time until it forms a sticky dough. And you see here it's sticky. So I'm going to pull, pull it together. We're going to use some dry flour. You put some dry flour so it will not stick. And then you use the palm of your hand and you knead. You could use both so you add more strength. And we need a dough so that the gluten, which is the protein in the flour, but remember the edo, it's gluten-free. So the all-purpose flour has the gluten inside. So we're gonna knead it. It helps to warm and stretch the gluten so that you can have a soft, light bread. If you, if you don't knead it properly, you will have a hard, rocky bread. So we're gonna knead it like this. If it starts to stick, you just add a little flour and you knead for about 10 minutes so that the gluten could stretch and you will have a soft bread at the end. So you pull together like this and you knead. And you're gonna knead for 10 minutes. When you finish kneading up for 10 minutes, you place it to, you leave the dough to rise until it double its size. So we're gonna add a little oil to the pan to help it from not sticking and some on top so that it can keep moist and it will not dry out. So we're gonna place it here and we're gonna leave it to rise until it double its size. So for our Edo cheesy bread, we're gonna make a paste to place inside. So we have the margarine and cheese. So you can use whatever cheese you have home. Could be cheddar cheese, mozzarella cheese. So any cheese you have home, you... And we're gonna add some flavoring. We have garlic, minced garlic, some sweet pepper and hot pepper. 
and some celery. We're gonna mix it together. And this is what we're gonna place inside the bread. So this is our dough. It has double its size. And we're going to roll it out. You could sprinkle just a little, just a little flour. Could roll it into a rectangle shape. So after you roll it out, you're going to take the paste that you made and you're going to place it inside. You could add onions, you could add hot pepper, you could add shallot, just to get more flavor. So when you finish, you roll it. Just like this, tuck in the ends. And we're gonna make a design. We're gonna use a kitchen chair and we're gonna cut it. So you cut it to make a nice design, or you could bake it just like that, and then you place it in your greased baking dish. Then you set aside and leave it to rise a little, like about 15 minutes, and then you put it in the oven. We're now going to make plantain buns using local plantain flour. So first we're going to add some self-rising flour to our bowl. When you use self-rising flour, you do not have to use raisin agent like baking powder or yeast. Then we're going to add our plantain flour. We're going to mix it together. Add some nutmeg and cinnamon spice for flavor. Then we have some lemon rind. This is skin of the lime, we grate for flavor. This is optional, but you can add cherries and raisins. So then we add our sugar. You mix it together. So this is a dry ingredient. You make a well in the middle and you add the wet ingredient. We have some melted margarine and some essence of flavoring. You mix together. You just want to mix it until it's dry. All the dry ingredients is coated. You want to over mix it. So 
This is our mixture, plantain buns. We're gonna place it in the pan. So we have, we have a muffin pan here, it's greased. And we're gonna take a spoonful. Place it inside. And you place it in the oven. So you place it in the oven to bake for at least 15 minutes. We are going to make farine nut ball. And here I have some farine that has been soaked. Right, so it is not hard. So this farine, granulated sugar. Peanut butter. and essence, some vanilla essence, and all of these ingredients can be found at the Guyana shop, locally made, locally produced. I'm going to add a bit of milk. So it would moisten it a bit, not too much. We want a stiff consistency. I'm going to form it in little balls. Roll it in the milk, evaporated milk, and toss it in the mix. These nuts would have been parched. some more to get that nutty effect outside.
We would like to thank the management and staff of Carnegie School of Home Economics for collaborating with us for our Agriculture Month activity. Special thanks to the instructors at the Carnegie School of Home Economics, Ms. Kavita Moore and Ms. Valina Grenian. The Guyana Marketing Cooperation is committed to assisting agro-processors and promoting local agro-processed products to expand markets. We hope you have fun. When preparing the recipes presented here, You can find all the recipes on the Guyana Marketing Corporation Facebook page, the Guyana Shop Facebook page, and the Carnegie School of Home Economics Facebook page.